Hi, everybody. Welcome to the series finale of Star Trek Congo. That's right, last Congo episode, which means we got a lot of things to cover, a lot of characters to wrap up, um, which is why channel points are off, because I don't really see a whole lot of rolling going on tonight, but uh, there is going to be a lot of scenes taking place, or at least that's what I have in mind. But yeah, um, I don't really have much in the way of announcements other than this group is continuing on to do a new game, uh, Euthenia, that will start next week. There will be no break in between. Uh, the only difference is our dear friend over here, Matthew, uh, is going to be taking a break, uh, work on himself and all that goodness. And in the meantime, we'll have Dear Wolf taking, uh, taking the spot, and we'll have Mr. Aaron over here playing uh, the captain. So it should be a good time all around. Uh, other announcement is that if you are watching this on YouTube, I've got YouTube memberships open now. Yay. Um, and you'll notice in the VOD that around credit time or around uh, break time, if we have a break, is that uh, you get to see your name on screen, which is kind of the whole thing. But yeah, that's enough for me. Let's get one last round of introductions and then we'll do this thing. So starting with you, Mr. Matthew. Hello everyone, my name is Matthew. I play Captain Lee Tobin, an intensely religious Bajoran, on his second command that is, as we have said, coming to its conclusion. And yeah, hey guys, I'm Aaron. I am Commander Dottig, the first officer of the Congo. Uh, as Mike said, I'll be the, the captain of the new Tuesday game, and I'm Draxus of Motley Heights on Mondays. And I'm Watney. I play the Chief Medical Officer of the Congo, Dr. Alel the Denobulan. And I'm Dag. I play Fives, Congo's resident tactical officer, ex Borg Augment. And uh, just for bingo, uh, if you want to talk about it, uh, you can hit me up at Trek Nexus. Right. So. Usually we start with an opening log from the players, but since it is the season finale, I figured that I would take this one. So we start by seeing an image of Deep Space October, you know, that kind of circular dome that is then relegated into sort of stick-like architecture underneath. But we sort of zoom around the top of this dome until we zoom in to the Rear Admiral's office. And as we do so, we hear Fleet Admiral Ignatrix say, uh, Fleet Admiral's log, supplemental. Uh, I don't even know what real time is right now. Uh, in any event, uh, I've been reviewing a lot of the uh, reports coming from the Congo, a lot of reports coming from the rest of the fleet, and uh, let's just say I think, uh, I think I've got something that Captain Lee is going to both like and hate at the same time. Uh, I think it's for the best, though. Uh, I uh, I think the Congo experiment has come to its rightful conclusion, and uh, we need to get these fine officers elsewhere and spreading their talents around. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, uh, got Tivna that position back at Starfleet Academy. Uh, she's now teaching second-level engineering, which probably is going to be hell for her, but it was her choice. Then, uh, what else? Oh, uh, remind me to call my mother at some point, but, uh, yeah, that's gonna be a thing. Uh, end log. And right as she ends the log, um, there's a chime at the door, and she says, enter, and stepping into the office is none other than Captain Lee himself. And, uh, Lee will slowly walk towards the chair, and not stand, but stand, well, not sit, rather, but, uh, stand at attention. Admiral, you want to speak with me? Yes, uh, you can have a seat if you want, but you might want to remain standing for this one. I, to put it bluntly, the whole situation where we had to get a JAG officer involved, I've been reviewing your records and your logs, and I think I have a side promotion for you, one I think you're going to enjoy, but it would mean that this is the last mission you're going on with the Congo. And Lee is just going to stroke his beard. Um, Admiral, have you found that my performance was dissatisfactory? Uh, have there been, well, have you reached a different conclusion regarding the outcome of that inquest? It's nothing to do with your competency. You're a highly capable and competent officer. It just occurs to me that your talents could be better suited somewhere else. And at this, 
She smiles, uh, slides a pad across the desk, and when you look at the pad, it is transfer orders for you to be the captain of DS9. Lee will smile at Riley. Uh, permission to speak freely for a moment, Admiral? Go for it. You know, Benjamin Sisko, when he originally went to Bejor, suggested that it was the last place that he wanted to be. It took him seven years to realize that he wanted to make a home there, that he was of Bejor. Looking at these orders, maybe, maybe I needed some time away to remind myself that that was where I belonged too. Well, the good news is that your family is already en route. When I told your wife about the transfer, she was giddy, which is, you know, Vulcan, kind of weird. But uh, she took the kids, and she should actually get you to DS9 before you, unless you, you know, go warp 9.9 whatever. But uh, that's your call. A, a leisurely pace, I'm sure, will be uh, just fine for the final cruise of the Congo under my command. Hmm. And uh, you also find on that pad underneath the orders is that the Congo A will then transition back to Utopia Planitia, where I believe Commander Rash is going to be redesigning the polarized hull plating, something about how it wasn't quite ready, something along those lines. Hmm. I found the experimental technology to be highly useful. Its applications were diverse, but uh, maybe she had another dream. I think it's more to do with the fact that she didn't like the outcome of your very last mission. I think she's trying to cope, but given her skill, I'm just letting her do it because, frankly, we need more minds like that in Starfleet. We need more minds like you and Dottig and Fives and Alal. It's kind of sad to see you guys go. Well, we'll still be out there. And the beauty of Starfleet, beauty of life, he sort of looks a, a little bit wistfully off towards uh, the stars escape behind the Admiral. The beauty of life is that uh, there are always people waiting in the wings to take our place. Mm. And we preserve for posterity the best of ourselves, pass it on to them. Very astute. Computer, enter that in the record so that I can remind myself of that at a later date. Well, Captain, your orders have been given. I have not told your crew yet, so I leave it to your discretion how you inform them. Hmm. Thank you for leaving that under my purview, Admiral. I'll, of course. Uh, I'll think about how best to break the news to them. Oh, and uh, before you go, uh, where did I put it? She starts rummaging in her desk drawers. I knew I have it somewhere. Aha, here we go. And she hands you a small present that is wrapped in blue wrapping paper with Starfleet symbols on it and a big red bow. Uh, thank you, Admiral. Certainly unexpected. And Lee will reach out and take the object, sort of weigh it in his hands for a moment. Um, were you hoping that I would open it in front of you? Or oh, I mean, that's, part of, the, that's me part of the joy, yes. Oh, very well. And very carefully and meticulously, in that really annoying fashion of a uh, sort of hyper anal retentive person, he's going to try to unwrap the gift without tearing any of the paper. If we were doing rolls tonight, I'd have you roll for it, but we can just say it happens. Um, inside is two items. One, it is the baseball that Cisco has on his desk in DS9, at least till the end, and it is signed by Cisco as well. The other thing it includes is a chocolate bar, and it's just a regular replicated chocolate bar. Nothing special about it. How? Is this a replicated version of... No, it's the real one. You know Should how I... hard it was for me to get that? I, I don't... <sighs> Impossible? Welcome to me. I make the impossible happen. Thank you, Admiral. This is, um, it's a piece of the emissary's history in his life that's passed on to me. I guess it fits with what I said. We leave some of the best parts of ourselves behind for those who take our place, as I'm doing for him. 
Oh, and uh, if DTI comes walking around asking where you got it, you didn't get it from me. Duly noted, Admiral. Um, also, I'll, I'll make sure to lose it on occasion when the Department of Temporal Investigations you know, happens by on you know random you know, investigations. Mm. Just tuck it away somewhere. Good idea. Mm. All right, and well. um, the, the chocolate bar. Uh, I mean, I figured you know you could use a little bit of joy in your life. So hey, chocolate. Chocolate's always been a good comfort. Less personal, but no less considerate. Thank you, Admiral. <clears throat> well, Captain, it's been a pleasure. And she stands up and holds out a hand across the desk. And Lee, transferring the uh, baseball to his left hand, will reach out and give her a firm handshake. Same back to you. And she says, well, Captain, you are dismissed. Pleasant journey. Thank you, Admiral. And even if you're staying here, to you as well. And at that, she kind of does that thing where the conversation's over and she just kind of turns in her chair till she's facing out the window. Um, but yeah, unless you want to linger, where are you headed next is the question. I think that Lee would step out into the command area of, uh, of D6 October mm -hmm. and just survey the area for a moment and turn to a comm panel in order to determine the location of Commander Dottig. All right, Dottig, where are you right now? Um, let's see. So we've been, how long, GM, have we been docked at DSO? Maybe all of two days. It's been a very uh, hectic time because there's a lot of moving parts going on between uh, the Congo and DSO. Um, a lot of changing of the hull plating because Commander Rash, again, is doing something with it. But interestingly, the Dorothy thing that we mentioned last time, you're keeping Dorothy for some reason, but nobody's told you why. All right. Um, then I believe, uh, Captain, the computer would inform you that Commander Dottig is aboard the Congo. Particular location or? Bridge. Okay. And actually, I would then look up the locations of the other two officers, or the other three. Commander Rash, probably working on the Congo, but uh, Fives and LL as well. Yeah, Fives and LL, where are you guys bay. at? Sick Bay? Okay. DSO Sick Bay. DSO Sick Bay. Okay. What about you, Fives? You're muted, as is tradition. I had to get one last one in. It won't be the last one, I promise. No. <laughs> Fives will be at his tactical station. Okay. Uh, then I think that Lee would uh, head down to uh, Penthouse, mm -hmm. but he would send a message to the other senior officers on the ship to meet him at a certain time that would coincide with all of their off-duty hours. So, with that in mind, let us now shift to Penthouse. And let me, uh, don't, don't mind the tokens there, I, uh, I have to do a little bit of cleanup here. Alright, so you're not there, you're not there, not you. Cord, you're up there with Ducha, because I figured you would have signed on with Ducha, with Cord at this point. But yeah, uh, a few hours ahead, uh, assuming you all want to come at Captain Lee's invitation. Uh, Alel, you step in. Dottig, you step in, Fives, and even Rash, uh, sleepy as she is, yawning as she walks in, follows in behind all of you. And uh, I don't know, Lee, do you have a table? Or are you at the bar? Or where are you at at this point? If there's such a thing as a semi-private booth, I would have that. But mm -hmm. uh, sort of recessed away from the you know, hustle and bustle around the bar itself. Gotcha. I think you'd be up on the second floor then because it's uh, not as hectic up there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the scene is yours. Go for it. Well, um, can I order anything for you? It's on my tab. We would actually gesture towards the uh, all of the assembled officers. Uh, I'll tear water. Interesting choice. Alil is sort of like wringing her hands, and why? Why? What's the occasion, sir? Just a bit of a celebration, Doctor. Champagne, then. <laughs> Excellent choice. Um, as you know, I prefer the Klingon alcohol myself. I have some fire wine. Synthahol, though, just trying to cut back a little bit. Hmm. Fives? I'll take an Andorian Kolsch. Did you uh, pick that up from the uh, 
the previous commander of the station. I hear that it was his favorite drink. No, I think you ordered one for me when I was in your ready room earlier. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. Uh, must have been something I picked up from him myself then. It's uh, When you get to be my age, you realize that your memory starts failing you here <laughs> and there. Do you need a checkup? Uh, there'll be plenty of time for that when uh, we disembark, Doctor. Okay. Are you are you okay, Doctor? I'm fine. I just can't remember the last time we all socialized outside of the Congo together. It's incumbent upon us to take advantage of the opportunities that are afforded to us. In other words, we're here. We might not be again for a long time. That's true. I think the last fond memory I have of us socializing was seeing Vibes fight the uh, Chief Security Officer Ember, was it? I was just going to say, the last time we were all here, you were taking bets on me. <laughs> to be fair, I, I was decrying the abhorrent violence of the contest in which you Yeah, 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 but, but Dante really started it. Well, it was a matter of pride at that point. <laughs> I can't have the this, I mean, albeit formidable, but still unknown security officer challenging our security officer. It's just, it's unthinkable. It's a matter of professional pride. It's a matter of loyalty to the ship, regardless of how much money I lost. Hey, Ember and I we made off on that real well like two best tactical officers on this side of the fleet i can live with that it was awesome seeing you guys on the big screen you were like the ha ha and then she was like <laughs> Ow. yeah you know my rotational cuff still kind of gives me a little maybe i should see you do you need later. a checkup <laughs> yes chief medical officer's log five C oh five. she's doing it again <laughs> Oh. Hmm. Uh, sorry, perhaps. I just got used to it. I didn't even see it anymore. I don't even hear it. It's, it's just an interesting affectation. That's all, Doctor. I, I appreciate your commitment to record keeping. No, for, perhaps just for myself and posterity, sir. I'm sure nobody else ever reads my logs. Actually, Doctor, your log report on. Uh, what was it? The hyper advanced breeding of tribbles so as to combat famine across uh, you know, underprivileged uh, societies. I mean, that's um, it's an interesting solution. I mean, we do have industrial replicators for that sort of thing, but. I don't sleep. Have you tried? It might help. Six days a year. I, th I thought that paper concept was a joke. Yes. Didn't you just I, wake up like a week ago? I even said it in my log. Dr. Alel had a very funny joke today. You, you I'm surprised horrified. you know what a joke is, Dottig. <laughs> That's a good one, too. Thank you. Now, where's my champagne? <laughs> it's the captain's treat, after all. Yeah, and at this point, the bartender has come by and dropped off all of your drinks. But as you all take a sip, I think Commander Rash finishes hers first and goes, All right, uh, excuse me. Uh, what's uh, what's the actual occasion, Captain? I mean, no offense, but I've I've got a whole ship. I've got to refit before it goes back to Utopia Planitia. Ugh. This is out there, Walter? It's vile. Why did you order it then? Because I've never tried it before. That's actually... That tracks. Yeah. That's as good a reason as any. Can I get it you is. another one? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, that, that doesn't make any sense to me, Dottig. I mean, you've now expanded your horizons in the finest tradition of Starfleet by sampling a new form of beverage, but... Mm. If it's terrible, why have another one? Because sometimes first impressions are not accurate. Oh, yes. I mean, 
given first impressions of you, one would think that you were a you know relatively diminutive and unimportant person. But well, I was more thinking of my first impressions of you, Captain, which was that uh, well, I didn't think much of you. No, oh, well, I am a moralizing blowhard, so. Well, you're half right. Well, oh. what's the, the half that was right? <laughs> Something for you to ponder. Mm. I am one of my worst critics, Doctor. Mm. And Lee will take a rather large uh, sip from his Klingon Firewine and turn to Commander Rash. Well, Commander, in answer to your question, we have received new orders from the Fleet Admiral. Oh. The Congo is to set course for Deep Space Nine for a crew transfer. Um, okay, who's, who's transferring? That would be me. My new orders are to assume command of Deep Space Nine. And as far as I can tell, well, the Congo herself is going back to Utopia Planitia for an extensive retrofit, which means that this crew, at least in the form that it exists now, is being split apart. Rash looks at her coffee and goes, yeah, this was a bad day to only get double strength. Uh, hey, bartender, get me a quintuple, please. I worry about you. Me or the captain? You. Ah. Uh, no, I'm I'm fine. I just need to be a little bit more aware right now because this is a serious conversation. Right. Did, we'll talk about the effects of the cumulative neural damage that you're probably doing to yourself at a later time. But for now, whose idea was this to split up the crew? Well, technically it was the Admiral's. And it's more than her idea. It's her order. Mm -hmm. So, you're, you're being reassigned, sir? That is correct, Lieutenant. What ship are they putting you on? Deep Space Nine herself. It's not nearly the bastion of the Alpha Quadrant against the invading Dominion Horde or a central hub that it used to be, but it's still a, an incredibly vital post at the edge of the wormhole. But you, you get to be home, sir. Like, you've, you've often mentioned how much that meant to you. And I'm... I'm going to lament losing you as my captain, but I'm actually really happy for you. Thank you, Lieutenant. That, that means a great deal. I'm sure that whatever happens to this crew without me, whether it is together or on individual new assignments, you'll do the Federation proud. It's been my the... pleasure. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay, Doctor. Please, go ahead. Who's the attending physician on DS9? I haven't been informed as of yet. Uh, I'll likely have to actually assemble my own command staff. Well, you better pick somebody good. Well, I already know that I have an excellent chief science officer. Ooh. My wife, actually. So... Maybe hmm. there's a little bit of nepotism involved in that, but um, a little bit. Captain's prerogative, perhaps. Hmm. Well, <sighs> seems like a downgrade to me, but you know what do I know? Gallivanting around the galaxy is a game for the young, Doctor, oh, and we... we're the same age. I'm older than you. Maybe I'm just feeling my age. Do you need a checkup? <laughs> Not everything can be solved on physiological terms. The truth is, Doctor, ever since we uh, encountered 
Ambassador Saluma. I've realized that I don't want to put my family through what she had to endure. This transfer, I'll be sad to no longer be embracing Starfleet's mission to explore strange new worlds. But if it means that, I don't know, I'm a little bit safer, a little bit closer to my family, I think that's On worth Deep it. Space Nine, strange new worlds come to you. Did I get that right, Dottig? I, Is that I couldn't understand the word you said. Oh, sorry, universal translator. This is a horrible accent. Hmm. Minsk. Gesundheit. Ah, it's a nation state on Earth. Never mind. Maybe champagne wasn't a good choice. No, no. I think champagne's the right choice. Well, Captain. I know all. Uh, I know all Terrawater certainly was because I hey, hate this news and me. I hate this drink and I'm sorry for interrupting you, but please go ahead. I just thought after a year of you know being interrupted by the commander, I had to get one in, sir. But on a serious note, Captain, you vouched for me when no one else would to get back out into space with all of the reports that you've read about my debriefing at the farm I don't think that there's any crew that has contributed more to me finding my best self and a lot of that has to do with your leadership sir thank you Fives I will say, yeah. however, you shouldn't discount everything that you've contributed. We may have helped you along, but ultimately the responsibility was yours, and you have flourished in ways that I never could have imagined. It's been one of the most gratifying components of my command of the Congo to watch all of you assume new responsibilities, grow and change. It's just like the emissary said. We explore the stars, not just to learn more about the races that we encounter and the worlds that exist out there, but to better understand ourselves and grow as a result. And that's been the greatest privilege, the greatest journey of exploration in everything that we've done. Here's to that. Sorry, Dag, you were going to say something to the GM, I think? Oh, yeah. Um, Fives is keying in an order to a nearby replicator. Um, and I'll, I'll DM you. Okay. But yeah, I think uh, as everybody kind of looks at their drinks in that sort of mournful way, I think Commander Ash gives one of her trademark long yawns and goes, all right, all right, uh, we need to focus on the positives here. I mean, this, it, you get to go to Bajor. You get to be a DS9. You've always talked about wanting to go back and follow the emissary. That That's good news. I didn't expect that it would be quite so literal in the sense that uh, the path that uh, the prophets have laid out for me takes me right back to his former command. But yes, it's it's affirming. Hey, why is that replicator shooting out a baseball cap at us? Um, wow, that was actually really well timed. Uh, Captain, um, I, I did a little bit of research trying to look up who the CMO of DS9 was right now, and uh, I came across uh, an honorific t title that has been handed down since um, Captain Sisko took his place in the Celestial Temple. Um, you automatically inherit the title of captain of the Niners baseball team, sir. I'm not sure if you play baseball, but apparently it's a pretty solid pastime in the hollow suites there. So I got you a hat. And Lee will just reach out tentatively and accept the hat, take it over. 
Um, I suppose that there are a number of idiosyncrasies about Deep Space Nine that I'm going to have to familiarize myself with, but um, I appreciate the gesture. Also, I'm going to have to learn how to play baseball, but um, details. <clears throat> I will say, given your records, particularly the gestures towards Dateg and Alel, your numerous successes and the papers that you published on the Congo, you will probably have your choice of assignments. I know that it's, it's really rather sudden, but have any of you given any thought to what you might do now? I well, don't. No, you, you first. I I don't know. I didn't prepare for this. Maybe I'll spend some time at Daystrom. And I, well, I've come to realize that I prefer being in space. So perhaps I'll seek a posting on a different ship. I suppose I'll have to, since Congo's about going back to Mars. Hmm. Any thoughts as to the position that you'd like to occupy? You, <laughs> uh, despite that, what was it? C double plus D, no, D double plus C double minus in engineering, you'd be fit for chief science officer, chief medical officer, maybe even captain, if uh, well, you had somebody speak to the admiral on your behalf. Oh. Well, I don't know about that. Really, it's just a thought at this point. I'm going to take the trip back to Deep Space Nine to weigh my options. Perhaps a brief foray back at the Academy. I mean... Brash kind of finishes her drink. I mean, somebody, somebody's got to teach those kids how to not screw up a, what, what is it, the, the microgangrial fiber with a nuclear. So I, listen, I failed medical science. I'm just trying to make a joke here. Hmm. So, pre, oh, blast! I actually know it, and I've forgotten it. Just in that moment. Ganglionic fiber with a postganglionic nerve. Yeah, yeah that thing. Yeah, that's. Hmm. Yeah. You'd be amazed at how many missed that on the final exam. I thought it was you only think one. it's a rite of passage at this point to like get it wrong on purpose? Well, I know I got it wrong. That's when you really want to scoop somebody else to be valedictorian in your class and you just want to walk and leave? Or you're hiding the fact that you're genetically engineered, as sadly, many of us still have to or many in that position do. Or you just test poorly, as in my case. represented by this remark. Well, I've heard that a lot of the ex-Borg are trying to get together to form their own community. And I might want to help them out. in the capacity as a Starfleet officer or in civilian service. However they need it. Are you talking about potentially a sabbatical or finding a position Maybe outside of Starfleet on a more permanent basis? I think the diplomatic corps might be reaching out to their leadership to see what they can do and um, if I can help with that I think I'd like to Fives you and I haven't always seen eye to eye on every issue as recent missions have obviously attested but throughout all of our associations every mission I've I've always believed that you act out of a sense of conscience you're a good man, and 
the diplomatic corps and the Borg or ex-Borg would be lucky to have you as a liaison. Thank you, sir. It's going to take a while for all of us to really process this. The trip back to Deep Space Nine is going to be a relatively leisurely one. Take all the time that you need. I just happened to notice that uh, all of our drinks are empty. Round two? Round two. I'm not paying for this one, though, so. I got it. Still got some of those earnings from that fight to spend. Have you managed to connect with her again? Ember? Okay. Yes. We have a line open every now and then. Talk about people we beat up and, you know, if I've assimilated anybody lately. Have you? No, it's just a joke I used to be uncomfortable with and now I'm good. Okay, that's, that's a relief. Um, that, um, you... Fives? Ember's the really tall red one, right? Yeah, why? Isn't that her first floor? Oh gosh. And five like sinks in his chair behind the wall. Go on. Yeah, what are you waiting for? She's gonna kick my ass, guys. Yeah, and make sure your linked your link is on when it happens. You want a front row seat, got it. Yeah. Um, Gotta make oh. those bets in real time. No, like actually a fight. Oh. That seems a little bit masochistic, Doctor. Do you need a checkup? No one ever checks up on the doctor, so maybe I do. He turns over to Dothig. Uh, Dothig, shall we escort the doctor to the infirmary? Just. How many years has it been since you both have pra practiced? You never really stop practicing. You just practice different right. things. At this point, That's Ember is coming up to the second floor, but she's not coming to you all. She's going to Cord because I want to say one last farewell to Cord before we go. And Ember kind of walks up to you, Cord, slams her t hands so hard on your table that your drinks go flying, and says, Cord, I told you before, if you bring that shit into my hangar one more time, you and I are going to have an issue. And I told you I don't care. I think she just kind of looks at you, purses her lips, and goes, All right. All right. You know what? Tried being nice. Tried being nice. You and me, honor battle, five minutes. I'm busy. Oh, so you have the honor of a targ. What does everybody have against targs? They're noble creatures. They simply do things on their own time, much as I do. Now, if you wish to be humbled, please call my first officer and make an appointment. Turns to Kermit Ducha. What's the schedule like? So Ducha has a black eye and two broken arms. <laughs> and uh, he looks over at Captain Cord, and he looks back at, at Ember, and he goes, Would you accept a proxy battle? I'm fine. The only person that would withstand a beating like that is a certain ex-Borg named Fives, and I don't... Hold that... Is that Five? Yes, he's right over there. He's been sitting there this whole time. What, are you blind? We're not done with this, Cord. We're going to have a discussion about your shit later, but I have someone to go say hello to. And Fives, all of you would have heard all of that. They were not being subtle. And uh, I think as soon as she turns her back and walks away, you'll see like Cord and Ducha will just like quietly slip out of the bar. Yeah, the rest of you have a uh, advancing Ember towards you. <clears throat> Fives will stand confidently. Ember, we're having a uh, a celebration of the Congo. Won't you join us? Kind of looks at the captain and goes. Didn't uh, didn't the admiral go on like a special mission for you to get you get you something? I don't remember what she got, but she got you something special. 
uh, uh, rather thoughtful and heartfelt gift. Yes. Um, cool. Because I lost my left arm on that one. The one you're seeing right now had to regrow a whole new one. What? Are you? I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize that it was such an, an extensive trial. Ah, no, to... it was great. It's been a while since I've lost an arm. I had a lot of fun. Um, Alel will, like, sneak up out of her chair as this conversation is happening and go and admire Ember's arm. I think, as well, um, Dante will use a, a popular phrase this past 40 minutes. Um, do you need a checkup? Uh, no, my arm works just fine. In fact, I, I think this one, uh, this new one's kind of nice. Alel will, like, lift it up gently. May I? Oh, go ahead. Oh, and she'll, like go oh, all in with like an examination of it Just yeah like, it's uh even for a cornet the arm is stunning like it's almost augment level how well it's connected the musculature all of it is just lovely my god this is wonderful work congratulations i'm sorry you lost your original but well uh, I think this might even be a little better actually that is uh one thing i uh was gonna ask uh you uh guys know any good doctors uh there's kind of not been a constant one for me since i came here so lee just looks over at datig and alel standing his drink we, we we know some some fairly competent doctors yes would you like a full examination and maybe after I do this to fives and I think Ember's just going to kind of roughly grab the cuff of your, your, your uniform, hold you just up so that you're on your tippy toes. And then she just very lightly taps on the side of your cheek and goes, next time don't hang up mid session. Gives you a wicked smile, turns and says, oh. say hello <laughs> next time you're in this area, everybody. And Ember makes her exit. But the uh, what's that all about? A very fond memory of mine, Doctor, and uh, I'll gladly keep it to myself. Oh no! I mean, does the uh, the Terrans say you know never? Um, what is it? Do not kiss and tell. No, 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 no. This is don't don't bring a knife to a gunfight. I, d I don't know how you augment date, but that seems wrong to me. Well, uh, my psychologist at the farm was Klingon, and, and, and she had some pretty robust ideas about, you know, self-healing. And I read some books. I don't know why I'm talking about all of this right now. And he'll bury his face in his drink. Yeah. It's because you're uncomfortable. And I think we'll also take another drink. <laughs> well, you know, um, Klingon spiritism and the association between the mind, body, and spirit, it's, a, it's actually fairly complex. It's, yeah. <clears throat> I had just gotten a captain used to my self. Now I have to do that all over again. Uh, see. If I can interject, just ask to be on DS9. Just take over the infirmary there. I mean, unless you want someone else for the job, Captain. Oh, sorry, that's maybe putting you on the spot. but. Uh... Well, you may not know this because, of course, you didn't join us at the outset of our mission, but Dr. Lell served with me on board the Fenrir, and I actually requested that she join me on the Congo. So... If she wanted to, there would be a position available for her, but I wouldn't make that decision for her, or imply that there was any kind of necessity or pressure. And here I hoped, well, I'm, I guess, suppose I'm glad to hear you don't regret your decision of questing me for the Congo. I'm two drinks in. Regrets ah. get a little hazy. <laughs> All right, well, I'll think about it. Hmm. Officially.
I miss coming here. And I think that as everybody kind of looks at each other in silence, we're just going to skip ahead just a little bit. And what we see is uh, the Congo A leaving DSO and warping off into space. And it is at this point that I am going to more or less turn over the keys proper to the players. If there's any scenes you guys want to accomplish between now and the arrival of DS9, please speak up. Let's handle those scenes. Because um, once we arrive at DS9, that's when we enter into the true end game. Like maybe 10, 15 minutes at DS9, and then that's going to be it for Congo. So again, any scenes you want, I don't care who it's with or where it is, now's the time. Um, as soon as everybody gets back on Congo and uh, checks their logs and their uh, their roster for the day, they'll see an alert from the chief of security saying that um, everybody is due for their target practice on Holodeck 2. Right. Uh, mandatory sign-off, yada de yada de. I have to have this to the first officer by the end of the day. All right. I, think, I, I know what you're going for here, and I love it. So we'll we'll say the same characters roll in from last scene. So Fives, you're there. Lel, you're there. Captain Lee, you're there reluctantly, maybe. And uh, Dottig, uh, well, we know what Dottig's thinking. But yeah, is this uh, the standard sort of target practice where it's kind of just dark, and then in the middle there's that light where you stand in and you just shoot that mm -hmm. way? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And... Uh... Senior staff is uh, well. Okay, let's uh, let's go in character for this. Hey, um, thanks for thanks for actually showing up this time. This is this is the first time I've got all four of you in the same room for this. Uh, 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 you know, let's just do it all at once. Uh, senior staff is required to train at level thirty-two. So uh, if you're rusty, you'll um, you know this will this will this will ring it out of you. You'll be good. Um. um Lieutenant, I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news, but I've never passed level 12. Yeah, it was 10 for me. I, I don't even remember when I practiced on level 1. I think the last time I held a phaser, I was still stationed on October. And wasn't that as part of a prank? All right, yeah, I got shot. Doc? What? You, uh... You you kept up, right? You're at Are you are you at level thirty two? I think so. Alright, well I will use special dispensation to make this a remedial course. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sirs. Hmm. Uh alright. Uh, computer start at level Level two. Computer, uh, belay that. Level one. <clears throat> the computer chimes and flashing lights begin to fly around in the darkness of, this, of the holodeck. So, because this is one of those funny moments that we have to do, I need everybody to roll me a control and a security. The difficulty is two. But you cannot oh spend threat. You cannot give threat for momentum here. So this is just purely your skill and what the dice have wanted to tell us. <sighs> All right. Well, fives, you do fine. Alel, not so much. Lee does a little bit better than uh, than Alel. And then, uh, did I miss dot digs? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, how apropos. Oh. Okay, you know what? No, 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 this is good. All right, so again, <laughs> Alel, you're just missing. Like, you keep firing and missing. You know, Lee, you hit maybe a target or two. And Fives, you're just showing everybody up. And then we look at Dottig, and Dottig, you keep trying to fire your phaser, and it's just not firing. It's just sparking, and you kind of look at it. Perform a little percussive maintenance. It's still not firing. And eventually, you just go... Fuck it, and you just throw the phaser and hit a target. I got good one. Use, good use of improvised weaponry there, Doctor. I had no idea you were so effective in a pinch. 
Well, no. I know why you don't use laser scalpels. All right, I'll have you know that the phaser <laughs> was faulty. Hmm. I, I, I don't think I've even fired a phaser since that time with um, a subspace coalescent life form that was attempting to invade the Federation parasitically. It, was a, it wasn't even a real phaser, it was a medical phaser. Special design from the Fenrir. Mm. Yeah, I remember medical phasers. Limited release. Yeah. Hey, Rash, you're not going to get away with uh, with not uh, not oh, getting. Oh, the last oh, oh right. There. Sorry, sorry. Uh, let me uh, let me let me see how I can do here. And since it's me, I'll I'll roll for Rash here. All right, Rash. How bad are you going to be? I have a feeling I know already. Hey, actually, not okay, that bad. Not I mean, bad. she's on the level of the captain, but yeah, she's definitely not getting the highest of marks. Hmm. All right. So are we supposed uh, to now throw our phasers? Is, is that what we do? I mean... No. No. Well, and fives will go to um, a tactical pack that he had secured on the inside of the holodeck wall, and he will toss Commander Dodig another phaser. And he'll pick up the one that the commander threw, stow it back in the pack marked uh you know broken and uh he'll say computer unless anyone objects we'll we'll try that one again so mostly because i find it funny let's just have dot tig roll this time because i think everybody else is going to steadily improve but let's see how badly dot tig does Why you not? can't roll more 20s right that just can't okay computer. there you go hey that's that's one success so yeah, now that your phaser probably works, yeah, you're getting a few. Not as many as fives might like, but you're getting a few. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, this is this is okay. I, I understand now why you've dodged me all the the last uh, what three years we've been on this ship. Um, well, it's, makes I I haven't been dodging you. It's just that, you know, I outrank you, and so you can't order me to come here. Right. I guess that explains why Prin's the only studious one who shows up every time. Are we talking about the same Prin that, that the one on the bridge? Ensign Prim that like freaking bullseyed a giant monster on. Do you remember that mission where we were on that ship and we had to escape through the crawl tubes? Right. Yeah. The the like the rail gun. Right. Kind of place, Not but actually included. Yes. I, yeah. I will just say that. He might have bullseyed it, but it was a pretty big target. So I think really the only thing that he proved was that he wasn't blind. You make an excellent point. Computer, reset simulation, increase size of targets 200%. I'll roll Doctor, this time for everybody. If you'd like to... Uh... <laughs> that seems like cheating, Fives. And I think... I think what that means is that even with two times the size of a target, nobody's hitting what they should. Mm. Yeah. Well, maybe we should call Ensign Prin down here. Seems like we could use some lessons from uh, no. what, the marksmanship ch champion of the ship. I'm, I'm sure he would be happy to do so, except that he's usually not happy to do it again, and he signed off a week ago. Mm. Sir. Fair enough, Lieutenant. Hmm. Um, does does anybody want to try level two? If we all failed at level one, why would we move on to level two? Shouldn't you like pass a test before you move on to the next grade? That seems to be. Sometimes I, mean, I feel the more strenuous conditions we're in um, pr provide better res better better results, sir. Right. So after this, you're going to report to sick bay for your mandated simulation of uh, cardiac surgery. Only if Dr. O Wait, cardiac surgery? Right. Oh, and uh, you... when, when, when you're done with cardiac surgery, uh, got a few EPS conduits that need uh, fixing as well, so... Uh... And uh, did you actually complete that task of scrubbing the plasma conduits on Deck 7, Section 3? Remember that the Admiral assigned you all well, that as a punitive measure? Right, and I tacked on too that I wanted you to to degauss the lateral sensor array. Right? Mm. right, right, right. You know, 
Um, I, uh, I'm just going to mark that everybody passed with excellent numbers today. I uh, really appreciate your time. And, uh, you know, if there's, uh, there's any time I can just pass you on security checks like this, just let me know. Hmm. Um, I, actually, Fives, I, I did have one question. It's not really related to this, but just um, the conversation about Ensign Prin got me thinking. Did you ever look into the fact that he was trying to construct a, some kind of improvised explosive device from the bridge? I mean, what, why would he do that while he was sleepwalking? That was that was a concern. That's not in my logs. I have to go. <laughs> and fives will like hastily make a side <laughs> sidestepping exit outside of the holodeck. Dottig, Commander, Doctor. And Lee is just going to fumbling, trying to put the phaser back into its locker. Mm -hmm. then leave <clears throat> so I like to imagine that the target practice is still going on like the big targets are going around and the last person out which will probably be I don't know would Dr. Lell or Dot to be the last one out I think Ola would probably linger okay so Ola you notice that once it's just you and Rash Rash just kind of winks at you and then proceeds to nail every single target that is on sort of display here and she goes Got to keep expectations low, because if because if they start after depending on me for security too, I I only have so many waking hours. Ola will like walk over to her like with her phaser, not obviously pointed at her or anything, but like what setting do you have this on? Ah, see that's the secret is that if you actually do this mode here, mm. the phaser does the aiming for you. It's something that fives oh. tends to not look at. So I wonder if he's just a perfectionist then. Uh, or do you think it's a blow to the Godwin. ego to use auto-aim? Yeah. Hmm. Well, we passed. That's what matters. Well, I will take her phaser, set it to that specific setting, and then like hit a few. Be like, yeah. I'm. Uh, Say it's easy. I'm satisfied with that. Let's, um, Let's not linger, because I feel if we linger, he's going to take notice. So let's, uh, let's bail. Yeah, she'll leave. All right. All right, there was our obligatory firing sequence episode. Uh, any other scenes that people have in mind? I think Allah would find go and find Fives somewhere. All right, Fives, where would you be at this point? Uh, Fives is running to the uh, tactical station to run a uh, analysis on any awkward sensor readings that occurred in the last 72 hours that might indicate that Prin really was trying to construct some kind of uh, explosive device on the bridge. <laughs> yeah. So, of course, Prin is there as you're looking all this up. But, yeah, Fives, you do see that uh, it wasn't within 72 hours, but if you go back in the logs to where, you know, everybody was not getting any sleep yeah there um there's logs that Prin was trying to do something and fives will just sort of glower at the ensign before like composing himself ensign Prin, can you explain these readings well sir i'm not at your console so i don't know what readings to which you're referring I I mean, I, unless them. you want to hook me up to your Borg collective like you've done with Alel and so I can see through your eyes. Oh, well, if you'd like to be assimilated, I can make that happen. I've got some really good friends. Friends in low places, I take it. That's that's befitting of you, sir. I, I would expect that. Here are the readings, and Fives will swipe them to his station. Oh, yes, that. Um... I suspect that I was attempting to develop uh, some kind of micro-quantum explosive device that I would affix to the warp core to destroy the ship. That would seem to be the most likely intention behind that. And you did that while you were sleepwalking? Yes. Uh, there's a bit of a history there. Um, perhaps not 
fit for conversation amongst other officers. If you'd like to interrogate me, I'm sure that your technique would be... And he actually just sort of suppresses that guffaw. Masterful. I, I'm certain that you would be able to extract any information that you required from me. Effortlessly. It'd probably be just as easy as waiting till you're asleep, beaming into your quarters and just talking to you. I know that you have some kind of attraction to helm officers, but uh, as as handsome a fellow as you are, I would respectfully request that you not beam into my quarters. That it's disturbing. Then Fives will just go back to his station. Oh, yes. I think if you really want to know, it's you know, the counterterrorism operations that I was involved in. Uh, I know a thing or two about terrorism. That's all. Hmm. I think Obidus speaks up and goes, y y you know, Pren, hmm. there are better ways you could have developed that. Because now everybody's going to think you're an actual terrorist. Oh, that was actually the implication I was attempting to leave them with. Yes. Oh. The Cardassian mind is an enigma, such as why we're going at warp 5.2 instead of the mandated just 5. <sighs> it seems whimsical. Ah, I see we're flying on whimsy now. Hmm. Well, one must find some way to amuse oneself when you're asked to plot a straight line and then fly it. What am I supposed to do all day? Just sit at the console? Well, has to find some kind of amusement. I mean, that is what many officers do on this ship, yes. Hmm. What are you doing to keep yourself amused, Anson? I'm actually writing a novel. I had no idea that you were interested in such things. You never asked. That's because I don't care about you. Frankly, you know, and there, just... <laughs> there we see the true, true reason why. Mm. Uh, yes, exactly. Of course, I wouldn't take that the wrong way. I don't care about anyone on this ship other than myself, other obviously. Than, yeah. Yes, yes. It's a delightfully honest conversation we're having, isn't it? It is indeed. Yes. Mm. Mm. Regardless, <clears throat> uh, I'll let you return to your novel. Well, unless Fives wants to add anything else. Other scenes people want to handle. Oh, I think Fives is just madly searching, cross-referencing the designs of Prince, uh masterful weapon with any unsolved cases. In I leave that to database. you two to decide. Uh, I th so yeah, I think Alel was looking for where Fives was so she could. Yeah, so we'll say that at the tail him. end of that scene, you know, Alel <laughs> wanders onto the bridge. Um, she's gonna kind of like look over Five's shoulder to see how busy he is. And he just seems to be doing a, you know, standard cross reference. There's a 3D graphic of some kind of explosive device on one screen while lists of options are scanning by. Some of them are getting marked out, some of them are getting highlighted in red. So she'll sit down next to him, I guess, at like her usual station. And um, so are you busy doing something? Oh, um, no, no, this uh, this cross reference is extensive. It'll be running for a while. What, what's up, Doc? Uh, so she'll kind of like look <laughs> at Britain and Obidus. Uh, can I talk to you in the ready room for a second? <laughs> yeah, sure. So, uh, she... uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, Abedis, you've got the con. Aye, sir. Step into the ready room. It's like clean up tokens. <laughs> for here. the ambassador is waiting. <laughs> we'll make five stocks of himself. Top there five you go. Himself. How long can we get to fives to or Dag to talk to himself is the real question here. <laughs> Yeah, you guys step into the ready room. And I think at this point, it's fair for me to say that, Lee, you've 
probably cleaned it out pretty good in preparation for your arrival. So the shelves are no longer there. Uh, the picture of DS9 has been taken down. And yeah, there's um, a whole lot of nothing recently. Just an empty office, really. Yeah, as Ella walks in, she'll just look around and be like, well, this sucks. That was quick. Yeah, I was didn't think it was so bare. Like, I didn't think that he was that much of a decorator. No, I think uh, I think he's excited. He um, he definitely misses his wife more than he would say. Yeah, I mean it's fair, and you know when you have kids, it's like, how are you supposed to? stay out on five-year missions and just miss their childhood and miss them growing up and subspace video calls only do so much yeah yeah they do well uh so i just wanted to talk to you about us all going our separate ways and well, I'm really going to miss you, and I'd like to still keep in touch with our, you know, link well, yeah. if you wanted to. For sure. I mean, this is this is a pretty awesome scientific breakthrough. If, if you're going to Daystrom, you might be able to find all kinds of cool applications for that. Well, I'm kind of thinking about taking the captain up on the DS9 offer really yeah oh well that's that's awesome that's that's coveted yeah but like october's way more advanced i mean that's true but you really want all that technology doing that work for you i mean sometimes it's nice but i do have a lot of hours in the day to fill that's true. That is true. But now you'll be able to go on missions through the wormhole. You'll have all kinds of interactions with, you know, the the ships that use DS9 as a trading port. I wonder if Quark is still running his scams like usual. Is he even on DS9 anymore? He franchised out a while back. I don't know. I'll have hmm. to visit Cork because I've never been there. But I it's hard to get excited about something new. I just really gotten used to everybody on the ship, and yeah, I think my enthusiasm is just masking that I'm actually. Um, I don't know. I feel like uh, I feel like everything's just wandering now. You know, it was it was just so stable to wake up on Congo every morning and I really appreciated having coffee with you the times we were able to make time for that and uh, this this has really made uh, you know different kind of communication a little bit more interesting yeah I think she would hug him yeah he'd totally lean in for a hug yeah. Yeah. Buds. <laughs> to give him a little squeeze. Blah. Like, so where are you off to? Well, I was I was serious when I was thinking about helping the XBs. Um you know, this the ship has the crew here and really like you have really helped me embrace that this isn't a burden that I thought it was. It wasn't a weight that was carrying me down anymore. Um, it, it lifts me up now. And I just, I think if there's anybody in that community that's looking back on their time assimilated and letting that define them, maybe I can help them come around too.
but I haven't talked to the diplomatic corps yet. All right. Well, I hear DS9 sometimes gets, you know, just a little involved in diplomacy. So. Just a little? Yeah. You know, fives, you're always worthy of love. You always deserve that. I mean, you've been indispensable to this crew. And anywhere you go, the, they'll be lucky to have you. Yeah. But, uh, you know, before, before my assimilation, uh, I had a captain who kept uh, a lot of rules. And they were all numbered, and I don't remember what they all were, but one of them was that a couple of light years can't keep good friends apart. I'll always have a subspace channel open for you. Yeah, direct. Direct one. And, and keep sending the memes, like, primo. Um, yeah, and I think I'm going to take um, Spot with me, so. That's really good. You'll get lots of cat pics. Yeah, he needs, uh, he needs someone who gives as much love as, uh, as a cat can give to. Sometimes endless, sometimes touch me and I'll shred your face off. Do you know, that's way. a pretty good description for that cat. <laughs> All right, well, um, better go check on Prince stuff. Well, um, oh. before you go... And you all turn to look at the captain's desk and you see Spot. I just want to oh, enter into the record that um, I'm not just a cat. I'm actually... It's a long story, but... Uh, this might be a callback to something out of character. But, hello. I'm Spot. Hello. Is this cat talking? I am, yes. Do you like when I pet you under your chin? Oh, it's the best thing ever, yes. <laughs> what's the what's the bad place? Well, like, you know you that spot to my belly and in my left side that you like to scritch at sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, don't do that. Can I tell you that I love you? Doesn't say anything, but the tail just twitches a little bit. And you can understand me. Of course, I've understood you since day one. So all those times I was talking to myself in sick bay, you never wanted to chime in. Didn't seem prudent. You're getting this too, right? Fives, this isn't another delta wave thing. Yeah. Spot is actually quite proper. So, that time you meandered into my quarters and I was on the phone with Ember, you you wondered. Yes, you, all of it. And may I say, you have an excellent technique. Uh, d d I'd like to keep that just much appreciated, Spot. Uh, Actually, if it's not spot uh, up in his arm, in her arms. Oh, hello! I'm being picked up now. Um, squeeze you. My name is actually Bartholomew. I just you know, spot's Bartholomew. nice, but Bartholomew is is my actual name. Oh, that's so much better. Can I call you Barty? Do you want to come to GS9 with me? Okay, you don't need to talk down to me, but yes, I would. I would come with you. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm not sure exactly how to talk to a cat that I just realized could talk back. Yes, it's a novel experience, isn't it? Yes. Hmm. So, are you like... Uh, where are you from, Bartholomew? Watney, out of character, would you care he... to explain where talking cats are from? Um, Ella looks at Fives like, duh, like... <laughs> Bartholomew's a dem key. From the Alpha Quadrant. There's a colony. I am not familiar with the Dem Key. 
Um, did you know? Did you know he was a Demki before he was talking? No, I just thought he was a regular domestic short hair. Or I'm sorry, long hair. Not to offend you. It makes perfect sense that you would track a planet of talking cats. They're quite rare. They usually don't leave. Barty, we have a lot to talk about. Meow. <laughs> well, you two take care of each other. And You'll I'm be sure getting I'll... picks, so don't you worry. <laughs> You'll be in the loop. <laughs> Thanks, Alel. Fives. And Fives will lean in for another hug. She'll give him a hug. Squish the cat. Squish the Ow. cat. <laughs> All right, I've been waiting to drop that bomb, so I figured to the oh final episode gosh. is the best time to actually Crazy. drop that. Mm -hmm. All right, other scenes people have got before we get to DS9. Uh, I think Dottig would go talk to the captain. Sure, where at? Wherever the captain is. All right, captain, your choice. Where at? I think he would be in his quarters. The one map I don't have. Nice. Theater of the mind. That's theater what of the mind. For. It shall be. And I think that uh, as Dottig chimes at the door, we see Lee in the middle of his quarters, and uh, he's packed away several boxes or crates, and he's actually uh, staring at uh, basically like a, a series of hollow photographs on a pad featuring the crew from the USS Fenrir, including his friend Vassar uh, and uh, the, uh, is she now a Commodore? Commodore Archuleta? And like from those uh, original missions from when he was first promoted to Lieutenant Commander. Right. And yeah, you, your door would chime. He tosses the pad in with the rest of the items inside of a case. Sits back in his chair. Enter. Yeah. Dottie will step in and say, uh, I'm sorry, Captain, am I disturbing you? Oh, no, not at all. I'm just, uh, it's amazing the flotsam and jetsam that accumulates in your quarters, uh, even though we haven't been on the ship that long. Mm. No, I know the feeling well. I'm only just starting to make a dent in the things I've accumulated since we came on board, and it is really quite amazing. But... Strangely materialistic, in a way. Even though we say we're beyond the possession of things, the Federation, all of our species, have evolved beyond the need to consume and possess. Though, as he looks down at all the items, several different religious icons that have been carefully stowed away inside a ceremonial wrapping, I suppose most of these are sentimental, more than, I guess, signs of status. I know that sometimes it can seem like a quarters or a home is just a space to store the things that prove to you that you have a life. But again, not why I'm here. I'm curious about Well, some of the options that I've been thinking of, and I'd like to solicit your opinion. Commander Dottig, I'm quite frankly flattered that you would seek my advice, although considering the fact that I've worn so many hats, as it were, throughout my years, assumed so many different roles from Chief Engineer, Chief Science Officer, Doctor, Captain, I might be the last person to speak to about making life decisions. I'm always jumping from one to the next, always in search of something. There are two in particular that float to the top. There is a chief medical officer position aboard a Stargazer class vessel. The USS Haley. And there is also a position on Earth that's Starfleet Medical. Okay. 
and I know my personal preference is to be in space, but I must admit the thought of having some hand in Federation medical policy is tantalizing. If I may ask you, Doctor, and this may seem like a, an irrelevant question, but I think it really gets at the heart of the issue that you are grappling with now. How are you dealing with the loss of your father? He was at the end a good man who forgot what being a doctor meant, allowed a bonanza discovery to turn him from a doctor to a businessman. An ethical businessman, but a businessman nonetheless. So then, Datig, what does it mean to be a doctor? If you found his decision to be so repugnant because he placed, I guess, profit over what? Helping the individual? I wouldn't go so far as to say he placed profit before, but I would say that he held the acquisition of wealth in a similar esteem to the responsibility that the physician has to life itself. In all things, I suppose, you have to make the choice that you believe best allows you to live up to your commitments as a physician, if that's the path that you wish to pursue. I know that you've stepped away from it, from it for some time, as I have, I think, permanently. But if you want to be a doctor, how can you best live up to that ideal? Well, that's the thing, sir. I don't know that that's what I want. These are the lines of inquiry that I have within Starfleet for opportunities in the medical circle. Still, even to this day, far more so than in the science division or the command division. I know very few people, and so the type of offers I usually get are of a particular flavor, and I just don't know if that's who I am anymore. One of the reasons, Dateg, that I've moved through so many positions is that I've never felt, I've never felt complete, I've never felt whole. I've always, in a way, been afraid. It's also, I think, in a way, why I became a captain, so that I could run away from my own family. You know what happened to my son? Yes. If I'm invested, if I'm connected to any position or any person, I can get hurt again. That's become my identity in a lot of ways. Hmm. The question that you're asking, really, Doctor, is one that I can't help you answer. It's the same question that I've been asking myself in each stop along the way. It's, who am I? Who do I want to be? Well, it may be time for a leave of absence to sort through that on my own. May I make a suggestion in that regard, then? By all means. One of the reasons I've 
embraced this opportunity of taking command of Deep Space Nine is that it, it lets me reconcile in a way with my family. There's a stability there. I don't, I don't want to live in fear anymore. Go see your mother. Go think about where you came from, what it was that inspired you to become a doctor, what it was you felt that you had to distance yourself from when, if you'll forgive me, you ran from them. It's only in the past that we understand our present and can live for the future. I'll take that under consideration, sir. That's all I can ask. Now, I've taken enough of your time. One last thing, Commander. And Lee will actually rise from his chair and extend a hand to the Datig. And, yeah, you know, of course, Datig will stare at it for a moment and then take it. I can't thank you enough for your service as my first officer. You have been a recalcitrant thorn in my side, forever proposing alternatives, prodding, provoking. And we need that in our lives. Every captain, every person, as you put it, needs the dissenting opinion. It's not an easy task to assume not an easy hat to wear, but you wear it well, and I may not have expressed sufficient appreciation for that, because you're damn annoying sometimes. The old saying goes, and I believe I've said this before, Tellarites do not argue for reasons, they simply argue. But among my people, Argument, debate, dissent is an expression of esteem. If I don't care enough about you to fight with you, then I don't care about you. I think, Datig, there is a purpose behind everything you've done. Not just care but a desire to see each and every one of us be our best selves. The same reason that I first extended you the offer of being my first officer when I saw what you did for the trial on Deep Space October. You force people to confront their flaws. That's an ugly thing to do because it makes people hate you where it can if they don't appreciate what you're doing. just want you to know that I do. Well. I'm glad that you're finally able to admit that I know better than you. Uh, just wait until you become a captain, if that's the career path that you choose, and suddenly you'll have a belligerent, cantankerous first officer who won't let you go on away missions and will constantly be questioning every decision that you make. It's good for the soul. I can only hope. I believe I will take some time, but... If I decide that my future lies down the path of command, I hope that I can seek your advice again. If I have advice to offer, it's yours. Well, really, I was just being polite. Speaking about your, yes, and speaking about any potential contacts you may have that you could put me in touch with. Oh, well, of course. I should have realized you weren't being polite. That would actually be rude for you, wouldn't it? It would be a disservice to you and me. Hmm. You know, Dottig, I've always found that uh, I can convey a critique in a respectful fashion. Co coat the bitter pill in honey. Surely as a doctor you can appreciate that. In life, each of us is afforded our portion of suffering to run from the unpleasantness of life is to 
deny a critical facet of our existence, a critical facet of growth, driving force of change. So why shield someone from something difficult when it will make them better? Well, Doctor, from my experience, it either makes them better or it destroys them. Only if they choose. No. Here's to making all the best choices. No more Altair water, please. I'm... It was a phase and I'm well over it. Are you sure? Suffering is good for the soul? I think that was what you were just telling me. You know. Well, maybe one before I go. Hmm. Computer, and he'll walk over, he'll walk over to the replicator. Uh, two Altair waters. You get them, but uh, what forms in the glasses is not the requested beverage. It's root beer. What has what has Rash been doing to these replicators? I, I swear. Months out of space dock, and we're still having errors like this. Oh well. Yeah. Best not to waste them. Um, to you, Captain, and your continuing journey. To the journey. Oh God, that's awful. Really, I quite like it. God, so it's like sweet and mealy. God, computer, cling on fire wine, please. Ugh. Tastes like liquid happiness to me. Sometimes, doctor, I worry about you. <clears throat> All right. So, last call. Anyone have any final scenes they want to get out of the way? All right. In that case, we are going to move to DS9. Now, when we pull up to DS9, we, of course, see the Congo A docking and people filing off, those that are continuing on to Utopia Planitia with Rash stay aboard. But the Congo A doesn't stay very long as soon as everybody is off. Uh, the Congo warps off to destinations unknown. But we move to the promenade where Captain Lee and Dr. Alel, you guys are kind of walking in tandem. Uh, Alel, you're pretty much wandering towards what could be your new sick bay if you took the position. Um, or, you know, maybe you're just following the captain. Again, your decision here. But both of you haven't gone to your quarters, haven't reported in yet. So you just have that one quick moment together before, you know things change and I wanted to give you guys that moment before I introduce some further things so different after the cramped corridors of the Congo 80 people kind of intimacy here and just looks out at the throngs of people shopping and parlaying it's like you're actually in a city a whole world the history here it's almost like a city of ghosts so much has happened here hmm. I prefer to think of it as a declaration that we can take the horrors of the past and forge something beautiful out of them all this commerce all of this interchange from all the species that arrive here all built on the backs of a Cardassian labor outpost. Well, I think that this place could certainly use your outlook as opposed to mine. So it's fitting that we take command. I don't know, Doctor. The very point of this place, the very point of the Federation, is about the interchange between diverse outlooks. As Dateg's taught me, I can always use a second opinion. It's yes. at this point that, Alel, you notice someone very, very important has stepped out of the Bajoran <laughs> Shrine, and Lee hasn't noticed them yet. Um, sir. She'll, like, nod behind him. 
And you look, Captain, and you see none other than the Kai herself, Kira Norris. Oh, God. He is going to fidget slightly and double check his uniform to see if it's appropriately pressed. Oh, don't bother. I'm not here to do that, Captain. I'm here to do something very important. And like we see a certain Kai Wind do so many times, she just steps up, grabs the ear, closes her eyes, and says, Your paw is very strong, my child. Thank you, Your Eminence. What... uh, How can I assist you? Oh, no, it's a rite of passage that every captain that comes through here, the Kais have to get together and put on a show, so... Your paw is actually very strong, it's just... I And she kind of pulls her hand back. I hate having to do that, but again, tradition, so... I certainly understand the, the dictates of tradition and ritual. It gives a kind of shape and connectivity to our lives as we look back at the past and project it to the future in a sense of continuity. Uh, And you can see that he's sort of just fumbling through his words slightly, still disquieted. Uh, I named my daughter after you. Uh, Oh, I know. That's actually why I was in the temple. Your daughter has chosen to help out at the temple during her off hours. Oh. Um, And you can see that Lee actually just starts to get a little misty-eyed, not quite tearing up, but if he (laughs) let himself, he might. Uh, Thank you for informing me, Your Eminence. Oh, and uh, odd question, but have you seen a baseball recently? Um, You might want to submit a request for information from uh, Fleet Admiral Ignatrix on um, uh, Beef Stays October. Um, yeah, I'm sure that she'll direct you to the uh, appropriate parties. Um, you know, a lot of ships moving about. Um, I'm going to go see my daughter now, uh, Your Eminence, if you'll excuse me. I'd, it's just um, wonderful, go with, wonderful. Go with the prophets. Yes, thank you. Wonderful meeting with you. <clears throat> Uh, and I think well. as Lee, as you awkwardly run off, Kai Kira sort of stands by uh, Alel for a moment and goes, you know, that never gets old. That uh, I might sometimes question why I became Kai, but that, that never gets old. <laughs> Your eminence, I'm a big fan. Would you like me to do the ceremonial? And she motions at your ear. Oh, I, um, I'm good. Hmm. Well... In that case, now that I've seen the captain safely to his new position, I actually have to go back and go yell at some Vedics about some certain orbs that they want to parade around the station. So, if you'll excuse me, Doctor. Of course, of course. Go yell. All right. And now, I believe it is time for the very final scene uh, Captain Lee has requested. Do you still want that in the infirmary or no? Yes. Okay. Okay. So we see sometime later, perhaps after the change of command has happened, or maybe just on an off hour. Um, is it just going to be you in the infirmary, or is Alal going to be there as well? Um, I'll set the scene if you take us into the infirmary there. Sure. Yeah. So we start in sort of the waiting room of the uh, infirmary, and we see as the camera sort of pans by that there's a nurse sitting on one of the sort of uh, chairs, um, the waiting room chairs. And next to her are two Vulcan children, but as we sort of pan over them, we also see that they are possessed of the characteristic Vul- uh, Be- yeah, Bajoran nose ridges. Um, at their feet is a large ursine being, uh, which people would recognize as a not quite fully grown Salot, a traditional Vulcan razor-toothed bear that is used as a pet. And the camera moves on from these two uh, children who are being sort of entertained or at least kept busy by the nurse. And it pans over into uh, one of the surgical rooms where they find Lee, who looks quite a bit different. He is now wearing a a new uniform and he is completely uh, shaved. So he is uh, clean, clean shaven now. And next to him, or he is standing next to the bed where a Vulcan woman Uh, is holding in her arms a small bundle and that she then hands over to him and he takes it up in his arms looks down 
smiles and the camera reveals the face of a small Vulcan Bajoran child and Lee now actually crying says uh, hello Vassar I'm your papa and I think the camera just pulls away from them and uh, we sort of pull out into space through the, the adjoining windows and that ladies and gentlemen brings us to the end of Star Trek Congo round of applause all around round, round of applause but yeah I think that was a, that was a nice send off for everybody I, I think we got uh, got a lot of loose threads uh, solved but uh, there's still a few out there for you big fans to theorize about yeah, I think that was very touching. That was a very nice end. I liked it. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> All right. So, YouTube, this is where we say goodbye. Uh, Twitch, stick around just a little bit longer because we're going to maybe raid somebody. But YouTube, thank you so much for following us on this journey. Uh, again, if you um, want to check out my games live, we're here on Twitch, ELHMK1. But uh, look forward to what's coming in the future. And um, yeah, I think that's where I'm going to end it. So we'll see you later, YouTube. Bye-bye.